if we get into the subgroup analysis, we have to realize there's only 66 or 67 patients in each arm. And so it's a smaller phase two trial compared to large phase three data. But if we get into the subgroup analysis, a few things stood out. I mean, the first is the earlier you use this, the more likely you were to respond. So frontline therapy with doxorubicin with lertumab uh, seemed to be better than if you were treated, say, eighth line, which was allowed on the original study. In addition, uh, younger patients seem to do better, say those under 65. And patients with leiomyosarcoma actually stood out as a subgroup of patients, but it may have been because of the number of patients on trial that actually looked like they did better. There were a number of other subgroup histologies that were looked at, but leiomyosarcoma looked at as one of the more important ones in terms of using this for that regimen. I think if you look at this combination therapy through the eyes of a sarcoma doctor, what you see is that most of the side effects come from the doxorubicin. And because of that, I think other than anaphylactic reactions, which are purely from the monoclonal antibody, which happen mainly in the Midwest, what you find is you know mucositis, nausea, vomiting. And I think what we really have to work and partner with people in actually is cardiotoxicity. This trial was written with eight cycles of doxorubicin followed by maintenance. And I think that's going to push a lot of pay, uh, physicians into an area where they're not comfortable going up to 600 milligrams per meter squared, especially uh, any physician who was used to breast cancer caps. And so I think it's important to revisit the use of either infusional uh, doxorubicin, but that's over three days, or the use of dextrazoxane. The label for dextrazoxane really means you should be using it as you cross over to the 301st milligram of doxorubicin that's given. So if there was a dose reduction in your doxorubicin, it may be given usually around cycle five. And you can use that to try to protect the heart between cycles five and eight. So as long as the patient's tolerating this, I think getting the most benefit from your anthracycline in this regimen is important and not just cutting it early just because you're uncomfortable with it. So partnering with an, uh, an Partnering with a cardio-oncologist is also important. These are usually now showing up in most large academic centers. And this is something that can give you the optimal outcome and really push the overall survival of your soft tissue sarcoma patient. I think one of the questions I'm now getting asked is how is this going to affect how we're going to do clinical trials? Most clinical trials are written in one of two ways. They're either trying to alter first-line therapy or they're going to alter later-line therapy. And as this will probably be as most second-line therapies require previous use of an anthracycline, I think that those clinical trials aren't going to change in later lines. I think what you're going to find is the upfront new standard of care is going to be adriamycin with lertumab. So what I actually foresee happening in the clinical trial realm is adding third drugs, or a, is adding a third drug to this combination to see if we can improve it even further. And so I see those as the trials that are coming. I see trials coming where we might replace the anthracycline with a different anthracycline, such as either aldoxorubicin or GPX-150 to try to once again make it so we can push the cardiotoxic profile. And so I think what you're going to see is that the standard of care until we're curing people will remain clinical trial. But there's a lot of thought put into standard of care elements into the lines and the appropriateness of each trial.